Hey, I'm Steven Kochitsky, creator of Galicia Archives. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Ternopil State Archives website to find metrical books, tax revision lists, and more, and we'll go over some of the resources available on this website. Now, if you find this video helpful, you know how to support the channel. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay, if we go to the website te.archives.gov.ua, as it's written up here in the address bar, it'll bring you to this page. Now you'll notice my translator up here is turned on, so everything's in English, at least almost everything. Now if you look down here, we'll see the phrase new version of this site. And if here we click on this, it'll bring us to the Ternopil State Archives new official website. And if you look up in the address bar, the only difference in the address is archives and TE are inversed. And for the purpose of this video, I'll be using this official website. So if you want to follow along, you could go to this website, archives.te.gov.ua, or you could click on the link that I left for you in the details section below the video. Now here on the main page, we have news, then we have events, and we have recent announcements that were made on the website. Then we have about the archive, e-archive, which we'll go over in a few moments, access to the archive, Heroic, which is information on the present war with Russia, Corona Archives, Publications, which we'll also go over in a few moments, and ways to contact the archives and different people who are there. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're going to use Publications and eArchive. So to start, let's go to Publications. And let's go over this first one here. That brings us to this booklet which, as the title says, is a registry of descriptions. Here's a little summary of what this booklet is. And let's click here on download the PDF. OK, so here we have the cover page. Then as we go down, we have names of folks who were involved in the making of this document. Then we have a table of contents. And please keep one thing in mind at any time, if there's something you want to translate, as I show in many of my other videos, you could always come up here, open a new tab, type in Google Translate, and you select what you want to translate, copy text, back to Google Translate, either Control V, or with the right button of the mouse, you click and paste. So that being said, let's go back. Then we have an abbreviation list, some information, and here we have a number list from one to 10, kind of like the one I showed you in the Lviv Archives film that I made. Now, if we go to page eight, here you'll see what I mean. Here we have one, two, three, four, and so on. So page six basically tells us what the representation of those numbers are. Now, there's one tiny little problem. There's a mistake. So let's go over that real quick. On the left are the translations of what is written here. And here on the right are the translations of what it should be. And basically, the mistake is here. If we look at number five, we have nomer opesu, which means description number. And then we have the amount of cases in the description and the year range. So note that this is all in number five, but if we go to page eight, we see that five is only the description number and the number of cases in the description and the year range are actually in number six. So basically, this should be number six as of here, and then this should be number seven, eight, nine, ten, and this should actually be number 11. So knowing that, let's go over a few examples. Here, for number one, we have, well, it's the first one in the registry list, so it's number one. Then we have, for number two, well, this is font two. Then in number three, we have the font name and where. And notice that number two and three are always bold. Then underneath, still for number three, we have the font name and where but in Polish, and this is not bold, but it's italic. Then number four, we have the total number of descriptions in this font and the number of cases and the year range. 
Then number five, in bold, we have the description number, in this case, description one. Then in number six, we have the number of cases in description one and the year range. Then for number seven, we have a brief summary of the cases in the description, which again, if you're interested in this font and you want to know what is in it, you could select this, copy text, then you'd go up to your Google Translate and well, you know the rest. Now notice here we have five, then six, seven, and so on. And then a little lower, we start again at five. Well, that's okay because each font could have several descriptions. So for this description, it'll give the information, then it falls back to a number five for the next description with that description's information. And again, it'll fall back to number five for, in this case, a third description and its corresponding information. Now, if we go down to the next page, you'll see we have even more. And then when we get to number eight, well, here we see Polish and Ukrainian. And now take a note again, if I go back to page number six and I come here at number seven, just to show you, copy text, control V, language of documents. So you see, this should actually be number eight and so on and so forth. Let's go back to page number nine. Then here for number nine, we'll have the terms of access to the description documents. Number 10, the reference source for the font. And in 11, well, we have notes. And as we go down, well, we have many, many, many more. Now, if I go here to page 185, it'll bring me a list of fonts, but by category, we could call it. And here on top, we have fonts of Russian institutions of the Kremenets district of the Vowen province. And here we'll have state administration's bodies. We'll have judicial bodies. Here we have local land management. We'll have non-governmental organizations. We'll have religious institutions and so on. Here we're gonna have fonts of Austro-Hungarian institutions in the Ternopil region. And again, here we have judicial stuff. And as we go down here, we'll have fonts of Russian institutions of the Ternopil province, administrative, military administrative institutions. Then here we'll have fonts of Polish institutions and organizations of the Ternopil and Bowen provinces and Kremenets County. And here we have state administrative institutions. Then as we go down, well, here we have police and so on and so forth. Now, if we go to page 194, now here we'll have a list of joined, transferred and disposed of funds. And here we have the translations of what's in the headers. And if we go to page 201, we have an index of geographical names. So here you might even get lucky if you do control F to find a certain place that you're looking for. And then if I go to page 204, or basically the last page, well, here we have a name index. And these are all the names of people that are found in this document. The only thing is then page numbers are not always accurate because here you see Nychuk. If I were to copy this name, notice it's CH. And this person is on page number six. Well, if I do control F, control V, enter. I'll look for the one that has CH. And here we go, Nychuk CH, and he's on page number seven. So this is one document you might have some fun playing with if you want. And now let's take a look at the next document. So I'm going to close this to get out of here. I'm going to go back to my publications and let's take a look at the last one guidebook. And here we have again, a little summary and to get to this guidebook. Well, let's click on download the PDF. Now here again, we have the cover page. Then on the second page, we have folks who were involved in the making of this document. Then here we have our table of contents. In the first one, we'll have our preface on page number five. Then page number 14 is the abbreviation list. 
Then on page number 17, we have funds of institutions until September 1939. And here they come in chapters. So we have chapters one to seven. Again, at any time you could copy and put it in your Google Translate. Then here on page 105, we have funds of institutions and organizations since September 1939. And that goes from chapter 8 until chapter 32. Then here on page 343, we have list of funds of the Ternopil State Archives, which were lost during the Second World War. And two pages later on, page 345, we have info on the Administrative Territorial Division of the Ternopil Region. Then on page 353, we have scientifically informative materials, methodological developments, bibliography of publications of the Ternopil State Archives. Then on page 359, we have index of geographical names. Then on page 364, we'll have name index. And on page 369, we'll have subject index. So to briefly look over this document, let's go to page five. And this is our preface. Then if we go to page 14, here we have many, many, many abbreviations. So if you want to know what one of them is, well, you could always pop them in your Google Translator. Then if we go to page 17, this is where the funds of institutions until September 1939 starts. And here we have our first chapter. And that's where we go down. We got all kinds of different information. So you might want to play around with this. Then if we go to page 105, this brings us to the next part of the book. Funds of institutions and organizations since September 1939. Then if we go to page 343, here we have a list of funds that were lost during the Second World War from the Ternopil State Archives. Then on page 345, here basically we have information, as the title says, on the Administrative Territorial Division of the Ternopil Region. Then on page 353, Here's the bibliography of publications of the Ternopil State Archives. Then on page 359, we have our index of geographical names. Then on page 364, we have a name index. And on page 369, we have our subject index. So that in a nutshell is what their guide book looks like. So let's get out of here and let's go to e-archive and select the second one, documentary exhibitions online. Now here we have different types of documentary exhibitions. Some of them are YouTube videos. Some of them are links to a different place on this website and some of them are links to PDF files. So here on the first one, if we click the heroes of the ATO, it brings us to that section of this website, which could actually be found here underneath heroic ATO heroes. If I close this and scroll down to the bottom here, if I click on the last one war 1941 to 45 memory sorrow, this brings us to a page on the old Ternopil archives website. Now, if we go here to the second one, the first president of Ukraine, it brings us to a PDF document on this person. If we close this and go to the next one, this brings us to another PDF documentary exhibition. Now, if we close this and scroll down, to the city of Ternopil in ruins in the spring of 1944. It brings us to a short documentary video on YouTube. 
Okay, let's go back. And again, if we go to the next one here, it brings us to another documentary on YouTube. And if we scroll to the top, let's click on e-archive and let's go to electronic reading room. Now here in the first four on top, these are pretty much tables of contents. So to show you one very quick, let's go to the first one here. Funds until September 39. If I click on the first one, it brings us to a PDF of this specific font and descriptions table of contents. Then here in documents in electronic form, we have documentary material on Russia's aggression on Ukraine. And here we have lists by district of Poland soldiers. Out of respect for them, I won't click on any of them to keep them off the video. And if we go down a little lower, we'll have publications on Ternopil during the period of martial law. So if I open one of these guys, you'll find different PDFs on that. All right, get out of here and back again. And now if we click on digital cases, if you're looking for vital records and different types of documentation, this is where you want to be. So here in the first one, font 37 description two, Kremenitz city magistrate. Here we have different lists of documents titled either revision tales or revised fairy tales. Those are mistakes in the translation. They should actually be translated as revision lists, which are census lists of the taxable population. And I left a link in the details section below the video to a Wikipedia page, which actually explains nicely what a revision list is. And let's look at what one of these records look like. And here we go. Okay. And let's get out of here. And if we go to font 484 description one, Jewish synagogue of Kremenitz County. And here we have the name of the font, font number, description number, the year range, and the number of cases. Then in the list, we have our case numbers, case titles, and the year or year ranges. So if you want to look at the birth records for 1871, we'd click here. And it brings me to a scan of the metrical book for births of that year. And here we go. Next, we have font 45 description one. Roman Catholic deaneries of the Galician vice royalty. We have the font number. Here should be the description number. So this is a mistake. Then description name, year ranges. Then here, number of cases. So here we have case number. We have 280. Then we have the title of the case. So these are records for the Church of Exaltation of the Holy Cross in the city of Monastajiska. So let's take a look at part number two. And here we go. Okay, I'll close this and let's go back. And now font 487 description one, Greek Catholic district administrations of the Ternopo region of the Galician vice royalty. And here underneath we have our case numbers and our case titles. And as you could see, these are Greek Catholic records with the name of the different churches and the villages that they are from. And as you could see, they have a very large amount of Greek Catholic records. Now, if you were looking for a certain village, what you might want to do, as I show in my other videos, is put the website back to Ukrainian and find the Ukrainian writing in a separate tab and then do control F and do a search on this page as I show in my Lviv archives and Kiev archives videos. 
and for the fun of it let's take a look at one of these guys and here we go here's the cover page and as we scroll down we have our metrical book and here we go and if we go back to the last one fond r274 here under description number one we have in a nutshell acts registers and documentation on the crimes committed during the second world war by germans and let's click on one of these guys and here we go okay and notice it opened up in the same tab and not in a new tab and that my friends is how we use the Ternopil State Archives website well I hope this video was helpful I hope it opened up new possibilities for you to find records in your research if you did like the video do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so and maybe giving the video a thumbs up thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video